So how many of you went to the OC pitch presentation at, in Garden Grove? Just a couple of you? OK, well, it's not that presentation at all. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, I am Christina Hall. I'm the executive director of the Orange County Food Access Coalition. And hi, Jerry Rivero, uh, program manager at OC Food Access Coalition. So before we move on to what OC Food Access Coalition is and what we do at OC Food Access Coalition, um, Jerry and I are going to tell you a little bit about us and how we got to where we are today. Um, so I have a bachelor's degree in biology and my master's is in urban sustainability. But I did not take that path directly. I got my bachelor's um, many, 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 many years ago and was trying to decide which, which uh, PhD program I wanted to go into, which one had the best stipends, where I wanted to travel for school. And then um, I was offered a job at a marketing and design firm um, in Long Beach. And the salary for that job was the same as what salaries at the time were for research scientists with a PhD. And I said, oh, I don't have to go back to school. So I took the job. And so that, you know, was something that I did for a very long time. So I had a, bi a biology degree, but I worked in a marketing and design firm and um, did luxury marketing and a lot of photography work and CGI work and all that kind of good stuff. And I volunteered. And my volunteer work was in food justice and environmental justice. And so I really hated that job. That job was awful. I hated it. But I was there for like 15 years. And I was like, what am I going to do with my life? Because I don't like this. And this is not what I wanted to do. And so starting at around year 10 at that job, I started looking for a new college program that I wanted to go back to school and do something with that. And I didn't find the right one. I looked at different planning programs and public health and all these different programs. And not one of them was quite right until this brand new program came around um, at Antioch University in Culver City which was a master's in urban sustainability. And it took into account the science and the social science. And, and it was really this social justice program. And everyone there seemed like such fighters. And I'm like, OK, I want to stir things up. And so I went and got that degree and became a, a practitioner working in food justice which was my volunteer work. So I was able to take that and make it something that I do every day of my life now. Um, my, teaching job at Chapman University is also around food. I teach a class on international nutrition and global food systems. Um, so my life revolves around food justice right now, um, which to me is food justice, but also water justice and access to water. So that is kind of where my heart lies. Obviously, we grow food, and that has environmental impacts as well. So I get to get that in there, too. So that's kind of my background. Do you want to share? Um, so how many, how many folks in the audience are from Orange County? Can you raise your hands? Okay. Live in Orange County, maybe I should say. Okay. Uh, all right. Cool. Uh, anyone, where else? Outside of Orange County, let's see hands. Grew up outside of Orange County. Okay, so a large part. Okay, cool. So um, I was born in Anaheim. I grew up in Anaheim. Um, Disneyland area, right? Yeah, hey, go Disney. Um, I'm the first in my uh, family to go to college, uh, any type of college. Um, I started off with a, with a BA in sociology at Cal State Long Beach. Go Beach. Um, because I had this focus, I think growing up in Anaheim kind of set my path um, as, I, as, as I was a, a youth. And as I grew up, I started seeing a lot of uh, inequities in our communities, right? Considering Anaheim has what? Disneyland, uh, California Adventure, if, uh, those are two different things, right? Um, two sports franchises, right? And there are still communities, particularly communities where there are people that look like me, that are brown, that are being, that are getting nothing, that we're getting the short end of the stick. So really this, this, fr this set my framework around equity and social justice. Um, and that's when I went into sociology. I started working with communities in LA um, around access, equity, civic engagement, uh, how to build communities, uh, like collaborations with cities, 
uh, really a lot on, on a lot of health topics. And that kind of guided my next uh, stage in my, in my career around the master's in planning. Uh, any planners here? What's up, planners? No planners? No planners? OK. So all right, we'll, we'll represent the planners today. So uh, anyway. Everyone public health? Anyone, anyone not public health? What, what, just sh shoot it out. Psychology? Biology? Biology? All right. OK. All right. So I'm going to have to represent for the planners. So anyway, so this, so this, this is where I went into my master's degree in planning um, because I thought that it would be a great idea to, to, to engage our communities, to have them have a, a, a seat at the table, to be able to sit alongside Mickey Mouse, um, what's an angel player? Any angel fans? Uh, Mike, Trout. Mike Trout and the duck. I don't know. <laughs> to be able to sit at that table and have communities speak um, and advocate for their, for their communities, right? So there, there is my degree in planning. And really, during that, those two years, um, focusing on community health planning and what that meant and what that means, built environments, um, access to foods, um, uh, bike lanes, walkability, all these things and how that impacts our health in our communities. I, again, growing up in Anaheim, I lived in the, sh I love to say this, I lived in the shadow of the Matterhorn, underneath the shadow of the Matterhorn, where we would wake up the day after the fireworks show and there's just, there's ashes on our cars. So like if you think about that, how's that impacting our, 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 our health, right, in our communities? But it's okay because Disney gets a pass for some strange reason. So, no, right? It's not okay. So anyway, so that's been my kind of motif. It's kind of my, my ethos. Um, and, I, and then um, I started, I did my internship, plug for internships for OC Food Access Coalition, by the way. If you're interested, we have cards at the, at the podium. <laughs> uh, I started doing my internship at OC Food Access um, because of that piece around health, uh, that link to health, community planning. Um, and I have got hired on and now program manager and, and loving the work that I'm doing. So um, I know there's space afterwards. We're, we're on a tight time budget, but there's space afterwards to talk. So we can definitely do this afterwards. So I think that's it. Let's go. All right. So OC Food Access Coalition is the Food Policy Council for Orange County. And we work as a catalyst to bring people together um, to make a more equitable food system, especially for our most nutritionally vulnerable people here in the county. So if we fix the food system for those that are nutritionally vulnerable, then we fix it for everybody and we make an awesome food system for all. And so that's really important um, that we look at it from the perspective of individuals that are nutritionally vulnerable. And in our county, being nutritionally vulnerable is often tied to poverty. Um, and so when we look at that, we can't do this work on our own. So we're a coalition and we have about 85 different partners that we work with from an agency perspective. And this is just kind of a smattering of who they are. Just so you can get an idea, we work with universities, we work with retail, we work with nonprofits. Um, so it's not just like one type of business or agency type that we're working with. Um, we work with all of these different groups of people uh, from a statewide and even a national perspective because food systems are so complicated that, you know, if you think about the local food shed, the local food shed for any particular place in the world is global. And that's not necessarily sustainable. It's not necessarily the way we want it to be, but that's what it is right now. And so we can't just work in one area. So we work with lots of different folks here. Um, and then I'm going to let Jerry talk, talk to you a little bit about this slide. Okay. Yeah, so Orange County. So what's the, what's the vi when, when you talk to your family, or for those that are, that, that are not from Orange County, when you talk to your family or friends about going to school in Orange County, what do they tell you? What's the, what, what are some of the common themes that you hear or things that you hear? Anybody, just shout it out or whisper it out. It's okay. We can go to you. Okay. What's that? Was it a farm? It was a farm, right? It's got the name Orange County in it. That's a good point. All right, anything else? They think you're living in LA. They think you're living in a, and how so? Like, in what sense? Do they say? Just associating something. Yeah, with, it's, it's lumped in. Okay. Yeah, I got that. 
What else? What do you think of? What did you think of before you came to Orange County with Orange County? I know Jerry said Disneyland already, right? Yeah, give it away. So Disneyland. What else? Beaches. What's that? Weather. Weather? Okay. Good weather. Okay. Wealthy people. Wealthy Wealthy people, people. right? Yep. Yes, for many people. Or everyone in this room, everyone that lives in Orange County has a Maserati or a Bentley. We all live at the beach. We just sail on a boat every weekend because we have the water and, uh, and everything's beautifully amazing for all of us. We all spend every other day at Disneyland or Honda Center or I don't know what. I don't know where these things come from other than like the real housewives of Orange County, right? Like we have these amazing stereotypes. Um, but Orange County, I like to talk about Orange County is a brand. We are very unique in that Orange County is a branded area. We don't have a very strong centralized government in Orange County and business is really the, the driver in Orange County. So, yeah. So we presented, uh, something, um, we presented to a, a conference, a uh, farm to school conference in Modesto earlier this year and it's. Northern, central-ish California. Mm-hmm. Hope I don't offend any Northern Californians when I say that. People always get offended when I get those wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and we and we posed this question, right? What do you all think? Because hardly there were only about three or four from Orange County, so we just don't answer. Just let the audience answer this. And yeah, we got a lot of that, like tract housing. Uh, someone actually said Real Housewives they of Orange did. County. They did. They took so our thunder out of this that. Is, <laughs> this is how it goes. So part of I think what we try to do, and then and then. You all know this because you live here and you're, and you're doing your studies here, but really that myth, demystifying what Orange County is. And we pulled this, gra- we pulled this data um, to present there, again, to try to, to try to debunk that idea that, that all of Orange County is, is opulent. Everyone's living next to Kobe Bryant, right? Um, but this is what they see. When people talk about Orange County, they see this. It's the median income here is the wealthiest out of all Southern California co- counties. Right. And when you see that, you're like, yeah, of course, Orange County's, they're fine. They don't need any help. So yeah. So then we went into other, and we started talking about, um, I think that's on the next slide, right? Um, yeah, we started diving deeper on the median household income. And you could definitely see how disproportionate these rates are, right? And how these changes affect certain communities. and. Again, living in Anaheim, you don't have to tell me about this. I saw this every day. Um, so this conversation, again, around what is Orange County, what this brand about Orange County, um, why, do you, why are you doing food access in Orange County? You, it's a, Orange County, it's in the name. You should have oranges galore, right? Um, it was part of the conversation at this conference. Um, and, and really... Again, that, that idea of demystifying, um, a lot of the work we do, and we'll get into it, is, is around policy. Any policy folks in here? Yeah, all right, okay, cool. So this, this conversation around policy, and you all know this as, as students, as, as you're about to graduate, graduate students, um, these conversations around policy, how do, we, how do we advance these conversations? And oftentimes you have to do that demystifying, right? Debunking that myth. So we use a lot of this kind of data to, to help bolster our arguments. Yeah, and so one of the things that I like to point out with this gra- or with this map is that a lot of the map are these lighter colors, right? And I don't know that you can actually, you might be able to see it, it's a really big screen, but this first one says $23,000 to $55,000 as income. That's an annual income. Well, two years ago, the same year of this data, the 2015 data, a report was put out by the United Way of California. And all the United Ways in California put together a report called Struggling to Get By. And in this report, it said for a household to be barely sustainable in 2015, they needed to make over $55,000 a year. And so what we see is that so much of our county is not making that that fifty-five to fifty-six thousand dollars a year required to just barely be okay. So that's really that line. That fifty-six thousand dollars is that low-income line for what it looks like in Orange County. And so this is why the work that we do in Orange County is so different from the counties around us. Many of the counties around us have problems with food deserts, 
How many of you have heard of a food desert? A lot of people. So a food desert is a place where there aren't any places to get food, like healthy, nutritious food. Well, Orange County is a little different in that, yes, we do have some food deserts, but m the most of the county is not a food desert at all and um, has amazing produce and amazing grocery stores, but the cost of living here is so high. We have what's called food poverty. You could live inside the grocery store and still not be able to buy healthy food or even food in general. So when we're looking at these issues, we know that we're coming at these issues from a different than our neighboring counties. So that's one of the things to know about Orange County is that, that food poverty, that cost of living is a huge barrier to food access and, and just you know access to anything in the county. So when we're looking at these numbers, um, we find that we are fifth in the state for adult food insecurity. How many of you know what food insecurity is? Does so someone in the audience, do you want to share with your colleagues what food insecurity is? No? OK, so food insecurity, you want to make food, to be food secure, you know where your food is coming from, like where your next meal is. No one in your household is missing meals. No one's saying, OK, I'm going to feed the kids, but I'm not going to eat tonight because we don't have enough food. So right now, we sit at fifth in the state of California for adult food insecurity. But that's actually better than it was years ago. Like three to five years ago, we were second in the state for adult food insecurity. So we've been working really, really hard to get people access to federal food programs and things like that to bring that number down. But we are still the 10th in the nation for childhood food insecurity. And when we look at that number, 10th in the nation, we are like the wealthiest county in the nation, yet we have such a huge high level of food insecurity. Um, this affects 12.3% of the total population here. 23.4% uh, of our children are in poverty and are food insecure. And that also includes 22% of low-income seniors. Um, when we are looking at the child poverty rate here, we see that 49.1% of the students in Orange County, K through 12 students, are on free and reduced rate lunch. So we have a huge issue here, and it's hardly ever talked about. Sure. So again, looking at Orange County, we see this, and, and public health folks here know this too. Um, it's unfortunate though that we have to. We, we, this is this is a real conversation, right? We we have to show up to places and have these conversations with um, school districts, um, with with city council folks. We have. I mean, it's there. The data is there. Um, sometimes when we have these conversations, we think. I think it's because we see it and we talk about it and we, in the office we're doing the research and it's like, yeah, this is, this is a no-brainer, this makes sense. It doesn't always work that way when you have conversations, when, when, you, when you set up conversations with, um, we, we do a lot of work with um, school districts and we try to sit on their wellness policy uh, councils. And really having these conversations, it's just like, wait, what, what are you talking about? Obese, obese, how do you pronounce that? Obe it almost feels like that. Obesity, it's called obesity, right? So uh, again, in practice, and you will see this when you, when, you, when you hit it, when you get there, that it's, it's really setting this stuff up and having these conversations which seem like common conversations, um, but it's, it's not always that way. So again, this might seem like review to all of you, but uh, this is what we present. So 30% of children and 54% of adults in the county are obese uh, or obesity rates. Um, and then this is a, a, C, a CDC stat that one in three children born in, t in the year 2000 will develop uh, diabetes within their lives, right? And then again, the thing about equity um, and the social justice piece, who does that affect if we start talking about populations, right? If we start talking about how that affects uh, Latino and African American communities versus, uh, you know, uh, white communities. So again, these conversations um, are, are poignant and strong. And then 
Again, 24% greater risk of diabetes living in an unhealthy food environment, which is, again, why a lot of our work is around um, promoting, uh, advocating for um, healthier meals and, and, and uh, more access to healthier foods. So when we're doing this work, like Jerry said, we definitely have to actually draw those lines for people. They don't see the connection between food and health. They don't see the connection between food, health, and themselves, and how they play a role in that system. So really the work that we have to do is not only from that perspective of drawing those lines, so um, that education piece, but explaining to them how the infrastructure and existing policy support these inequities and how we can change the structure of the entire system through infrastructure change and policy change. So those are the three main areas that we do our work from, that space of infrastructure, education, and policy. Because even if you change something in one area, Orange County is 34 different cities, it's 28 different school districts, and like I said, we have a very decentralized, hands-off, county government so we have to redo this over and over and over again and so you have to get it into the policies of these cities and school districts to make sure it stays so you have enough time to now move on to the next city um, we hold a lot of different work groups and so uh, we can I'm gonna go through them very quickly just so you kind of get an idea of what they look like so work groups are open for people community members um, but a lot of it is agencies coming together because we're trying to get them to start taking steps to fill some of the gaps that are in the existing system. So as a food policy council and as an agency director, I don't feel it's our job to reinvent the wheel or do something someone else is doing. What we need to do is find the gaps and get the people together that can work on plugging those gaps and making those gaps disappear. And so that's kind of the focus behind each of our work groups. So because we are a food policy council, obviously we have a policy and advocacy work group. We do a lot of work locally, but also mostly statewide because that has a lot to do with what our families are living through, living with on the ground, but also federal. So the federal food policy that is most important to everyone and affects everyone in this country is the farm bill. So that's the main policy piece that we work on at the federal level, but there's also other kinds of rules that, and bills that go into place throughout any given legislative cycle. So we work on those as well. Um, before we started putting together this policy and advocacy work group in 20, the end of 2012, no one in the food world, like people that work in food justice or food banking or anything like that, no one had ever sat in a Republican lawmaker's office. We are a Republican county. What do you mean we haven't sat in a Republican lawmaker's office? Well, they don't agree with things that we do. That's not how you change things, by talking to people you agree with. So we had to kind of shake things up even internally with our organizations. It's like, to get things done, we have to make connections with people that don't agree with us. That's how we're gonna make change. So our policy and advocacy work group really shook things up. I didn't realize it was gonna shake things up, so I didn't realize it was such a crazy concept that we were gonna to talk to our actual lawmakers here. But yes, that was one of them. Um, and with that, we moved on and created the Food Providers Forum, which is a capacity building workshop for our smaller food pantries. What we found in practice is that a lot of food pantries are at churches and it's, you know, somebody's grandma saw a need and started a food pantry. Well, she didn't have the background to start her own nonprofit or know what that even meant at the time. She just saw a need and was trying to help. And so we want to give her some access to this is how you do social media and this is how you write a grant and all of these different kinds of things because we want to make these food pantries as successful as possible. Um, our farmers market work group is a group of the small independent farmers markets here in the county. They're the managers of those markets that want to, you know, network, share, work together to, 
to help strengthen their um, markets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you talk next on uh, the Farm to School Task Force. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Farm to School Task Force, um, that's kind of my, my home um, and where I do a lot of the work that I'm doing. With our Farm to School Task Force, we work a lot on the, the farm to fork uh, movement, but really more farm to school. So trying to get um, schools um, within the county, school districts to uh, procure local foods, um, work on uh, school gardens at schools, right? Get school gardens in there. And then um, uh, n nutrition education are the three big components about that, of that. Um, so we're working, again, and, and what Christina alluded to earlier is having these conversations. Orange County has 28 district, uh, school districts, right? Within the county. So these conversations that we're having, this presentation that we're showing to you today, we basically have to present it 28 times and speak to different, 28 different school districts. So this is part of uh, our challenge in the county that Christina was talking about earlier. Um, and, and, and that's why this farm, farm to School Task Force, I think, is, is key because it brings folks to the table, uh, food service directors, um, school staff, and then we're all sitting at a table talking about these, um, these important issues. Um, and then we have the Older Adult uh, Food Security Task Force group, which is pretty new, right? It's, it's, it's started within the last year and a half, maybe two years? No, it was less I feel than like that. even less than that. Yeah, so I feel like we started it this year. Right, right, that's right. Right? Time is just... Yeah, that was our brand, brand new one. So any, so demographically speaking, we've all, we all know of, of um, our baby boomers, right? Our baby boomer generation. Okay, so yeah, so this, this group is really focusing on that, what did they, someone called it the silver tsunami? in Orange County and really the, the effects that that's gonna have in our communities, right? So this older uh, adult food security work is, is, is great. It's like, it's starting from the ground right now and there's a lot of work coming out of that, um, really addressing the future uh, issues that we may run into um, in the next few years, right? You have yeah. those numbers. I mean, we're looking, people have estimated that we're gonna have double the older adult population between 2020 and 2025 than we have today. So that's just like mind boggling when we think about the fact that there's so many low income seniors, the cost of living in Orange County is so high. We are gonna have a lot of people that need help. So if we can try and you know maybe get under it before it happens, a lot of these issues we react to like oh, people are poor in Orange County, they don't have high income, let's solve it. But maybe this one, we can come into it and maybe solve some things before they happen. Um, let's see, our urban agriculture work group, that's really that focus on school gardens, community gardens, um, micro farm spaces, actual larger farms. We still have a couple left in Orange County, but really, you know, how do we make this area more resilient by growing our own food? Um, and that doesn't mean that everyone should be growing their own food. I think it's great when people can grow their own food, but I hear so many people that are decision makers that say, oh, let's just have a community garden and low income people can grow their own food. That's not the solution. If I have four minimum wage jobs to try and keep a roof over my head, how much time do I have to actually grow something? So I don't speak of these urban agriculture spaces as a replacement for actually solving the systemic issues in Orange County, but growing your own food is fabulous. It creates resiliency. It connects our children to our food system. It makes stronger, more educated individuals around food. Um, and there's, you know, the therapeutic and mental health elements to it, but it needs to be here. It's just not the solution. So just want to make that very, very clear because I hear that a lot. Oh, let's just have a community garden and everything will be good. Um, our newest, absolutely newest uh, work group is our CalFresh Outreach Work Group. So there's CalFresh outreach individuals who help people enroll in CalFresh because CalFresh, which is the food stamp program at the federal level, it's called SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. It's not easy to get onto the program. Applying for the program is a real pain in the butt. 
and it's difficult and it's complicated and it's difficult and complicated for someone with a degree whose who's first language is, is English. And so for other people that are in a crisis situation that they need food assistance, you know, being stressed doesn't make it any easier to fill out this paperwork. So we have CalFresh assistance individuals in the county that help case manage people to get signed up for CalFresh. Not to mention as well, our, our communities that are with the current political turmoil, uh, families that are, that are, that are no longer uh, applying to CalFresh because of the fear, right? That fear of the government having my information. Um, and, and part of what this outreach does as well is try to, try to help calm some of these sentiments. Um, we've had, I've, I've, talk, I've talked to a, a couple of folks that have heard, have heard from social workers um, some very, very, very bad things. And they've told the communities, it's, it's don't apply, don't apply, stop applying, don't apply. These are licensed social workers saying this, okay? So again, I think part of the work we do with these work groups is, is that outreach, connecting with folks, connecting folks, connecting our community folks, connecting agencies to help kind of battle these, these hiccups that we start seeing. And then the last one on here is the Buena Park Collaborative, which is an example of a city-based collaborative. So these other groups are countywide, right? We're meeting with countywide individuals, but also because we are 34 different cities, we have city collaboratives that come together and try to do work within their city boundaries. And so that's an example of that as well. Um, we also, that's not all we do, we don't just convene work groups, we do have some direct or quote unquote direct service programs as well. Like I said, we don't want to reinvent the wheel so we really don't have anything that would be considered an actual direct service because we work with someone else for all of our programs too. So our Real Meals Culinary and Nutrition Education Program is where we go out and do culinary and nutrition education like cooking, um, pantry work, like how do you have a pantry in your home, how do you grocery shop, all these different kinds of workshops. Um, and we partner with low-income housing um, it, groups or uh, families that are transitioning from homelessness, uh, lots of different groups. We partner with them to do these classes. Right now we're very focused on our Food with Friends program, which is focused on that senior population, low-income seniors, and it's the cooking demonstration, but really it's tied into reducing social isolation. Um, do you want to talk about Harvest Club? Yeah, so we, have, we also have Harvest Club, which is the only one in Orange County, right? Yep. Backyard gleaning program in Orange County, which um, we go into, folks call us and they say, hey, I have two orange trees that are just, the food's going to go to waste. Can you please help us? So we go in, we have a group of volunteers go, we, um, we harvest the oranges, um, we box it and we take the fruit to a local food bank. Um, and this has been going strong for, what was last year's total? 81,000, almost 82,000 pounds. 82,000 pounds of fruit in last year's total delivery. So, so it's from backyards in Orange County. Yeah. Like you've probably all driven around and seen trees with fruit falling off of it, right? Yeah. That's all this fruit is, is yep. somebody's backyard. And then the food matters. So we have we also uh, invite folks to have series at our location called Food Matters events. Um, really, they're community focused, um, and it's really around um, urban ag. It's um, how to speak to a legislator, right? Um, what was the last one? Um, wasn't our last one actually our Legislative 101? That's the Legislative 101, right. right. So again, the idea of sparking these conversations with folks, um, getting them that advocacy piece, right? Getting them speaking about it, getting them involved. Um, we have guest speak speakers uh, give their expertise and their advice. And then the one that's coming up this, this time around is? We're looking at uh extreme weather events and how to protect your growing space from them. So we just started with the drought, but then we realized there's, like if you think about this last two weeks, right? One day it was freezing cold and raining, and then it was 90, and then it was sunny, and then it was cloudy and cold. Like, how do you keep your garden going when this weather is just, you know, you can't even decide what it's gonna be. 
Um, so that's our next one. Also, you know, our, you talked about how we had that legislative 101 and we talked about how you speak with legislators. We just came back from, well, Jerry just came back from Sacramento. I watched on the phone, but Jerry just came back from Sacramento. We took some moms up to Sacramento to talk to lawmakers. Right. Do you want to? Yeah, and again, that, 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 that building piece, right? If we as an agency go to a legislative office and have a visit and say, hey, healthier, health, healthier communities, more access to, at, at some point they're gonna be like, oh, here comes Jerry again. Here you go, all right, let's sit down, Jerry, right? And they, start, they stop listening after a while. They're listening, but they're not really listening. Um, it's when you get community folks to tell their stories, to be there, to tell, this is why we need this. This is why, that's when the most impact, we've seen a lot of impact in that. So yeah, this last, last month we, we, uh, we had uh, three, three champion moms um, who are part of this big Champions for Change movement in Orange County, um, head up, and they spoke to their legislators, and they rocked it, they killed it. And it was amazing, too. English was not their first language, and they didn't, they didn't care. They said, let us in that office. Let us in that office. So there was this, there was, just thinking about it, it's getting my, my, it's making my, my giving me uh, goosebumps. Just to feel that energy, they're like, I don't care. They weren't intimidated by this. It's intimidating for, as Christina was saying earlier, Sometimes for us just to talk to a legislator, even our own language, like English, right? These moms walked in and they owned it. They owned it. It's so great. I, I love it. This is still one of my highlights of working here, doing that stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, community engagement. So we're going to basically open it up for questions. We want to give you an opportunity to ask us anything. It could be from this presentation. It could be something you've heard, whatever. Um, but. I'm going to leave this slide up because it has our um, website and our Facebook and Instagram. We're on Twitter, although I don't like Twitter, but we are. Um, and I have cards up here too. So yeah, I'm going to open it up. I, well, I'm going to send it back to you. 